peeps, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be filming a Q&A video for you guys. I'm currently away on holiday. You may notice this is not my normal setting and Jackson is having a nap in the other room. So I thought I'd quickly film a Q&A so that you have some content while I'm away. The first thing I wanted to mention is that I'm currently running a competition where you could enter and win to have a luxury afternoon tea with me in London for you and a friend. You only have until the 12th of August to enter um, this competition. So I wanted to mention it here, but we'll basically cover your travel into London. It'll be for you and a friend. We'll have luxury afternoon tea together, sandwiches, champagne, cakes, the works. And yeah, it'd just be really nice to meet one of my followers. So I'm really, really excited about it. So I will put a link in the description so that you can go ahead and enter. It's really simple to enter on the Channel One website. They have set up a whole way that you can do this competition. Um, so yes, if you haven't entered already, check that link in the description. Now onto the questions. And the first one I thought I'd answer is about this vacation and why did we decide to renew our vows? So we're currently in Turks and Caicos and we've always wanted to come here. This was an option of somewhere we could come for our honeymoon 10 years ago, but in the end we went to Bali. So it's always been somewhere we've wanted to visit. It just looks like the most beautiful island and this resort in particular has been on my vision board. I've been like secreting it into my life. And a year ago I booked this holiday. I was just like, I'm just gonna book it and we can pay it off slowly over the year. And as I booked it, they said, are you celebrating anything? And I was like, it's actually our 10 year wedding anniversary. And she said, well, you get one night free because it's your anniversary. And um, for just $300, you can renew your vows. So I was like, yes, put that on the bill because I've saved a night <laughs> um, because it's our anniversary. So you have to bring your marriage certificate and all that stuff. So we booked it and it has been so special. I hope to have the video of our renewal ceremony up very soon, hopefully this Friday. Um, but yeah, it was really, really special. Fraser walked me down the aisle. Caleb gave me a surprise eternity ring. And yeah, it was just really lovely to show the boys like how in love we are. I don't know if anyone else gets this, but whenever I look at our wedding photos, I have to do a double take and I'm almost looking for the boys. It's really weird. When I look at it, I'm like, where's Fraser? Where's Caleb? Where's Jackson? So I don't know. It was just really special to have them there with us. It was just the five of us, um, but it was really, really sweet. And even Jackson keeps talking about the wedding. <laughs> I really hope you can hear me. Okay. The pool music is so loud, but anyway, on to the next question. The next one is how do you plan your YouTube content? So in the early days, I definitely just winged it. I would do a weekly vlog um, and then anything else that I fancied doing. But now that this is my proper job. I use a website called Trello and it's really easy to use it makes me feel super organized you can create boards on it so I'll have like a board for August and then I'll have like a list of ideas and then I'll have four weeks and then I'll put the ideas like three ideas into each week if that makes sense and then I can slot in any brand work as well um, but it's a great website to use I actually did boards for the boys Christmas presents as well because then I could see who had what and like make sure it was all even and um, stocking stuffers and that kind of thing as well. The next question is, how do you keep your energy levels up? Do you ever have lazy days? You always seem so productive. So I think I am quite an active person. And if I'm honest, I've mentioned this before on my channel, but I really struggle to relax. I have this like hyper energy. My mom says as a child, I was always hyperactive. I like to be doing stuff. If you said to me, would you like to go and have a lazy spa day? I actually struggle to enjoy that or relax. I don't know why, but my grandma was always the same. Um, I remember her always like buzzing around and like having this nervous energy. Um, so I don't know if that's just the way I am, um, but I actually really enjoyed running. Sometimes I really don't feel like going for a run and then I'll go for one and I'll feel so much better and more energized after that. I also got the fourth baby question so many times, you guys. I've said before that Jackson is our last. Unfortunately, I'd love to have like 10 babies. I honestly feel like I could just keep going forever. But I'm getting older, we need to be responsible, blah, 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 blah. 
But someone asked, if we did have another imaginary baby, um, what will we name them if it was a girl and if it was a boy? So for girls' names, I loved Lani and Luella. They were like the names that I really liked for a little girl. And for a boy, I don't know. Me and Matt really struggled to agree on boys' names. I love the name Grey. Um, I also love the name James. I loved Chase and I loved Brody. I loved Bodie as well. There were so many, um, but Matt didn't really like any of those but as this is an imaginary baby I will go with Chase <laughs> the next question is where do you see yourself in five years time so in five years Fraser will be 13 yeah so I'll have a, a, like a new teenager and then Caleb will be 10 and Jackson will be at school so life will definitely be different I'll have three at school um, I would love to get to a place where I work all day while they're at school and then I don't have to do work in the evenings because at the moment the boys go to bed and that is when my like office hours start so from like seven till midnight that is when I do the bulk of my work so when the boys are older I would love it if I was still doing this um, if I could you know actually do the work in the day and then when they come home like focus on homework and stuff with them and then actually not work at night but who knows what the future holds I think we might move house one day depending on where Fraser goes to senior school and um, yeah I just I would love if life was still exactly um, as it is right now I feel so super lucky to be doing a job that I love and to be traveling loads and just have so much time with the boys so if I could just stay like this that would be amazing but I know it's not going to um, another question which kind of links into this question was someone asked me when I became a new mother if I felt like I lost my identity and I think that happens to a lot of mums definitely when I had Fraser I felt that I went from having a social life and having this career to being at home and my sole purpose being him and I definitely yeah lost my identity I think having my channel really helped and I have loved every second of motherhood I feel like it's something I'm good at and something that I was meant to do like I love it um, but it's funny now I'm actually coming out of the baby stage I feel like I'm losing my identity again because I have an eight-year-old a five-year-old and a two-year-old but my two-year-old is nearly three and I've been so like baby 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 for the past eight nine years um, but now I'm like oh now what like <laughs> I have babies that's what I do and it's really weird I don't know if anyone else has experienced this let me know in the comments but now I'm coming out of that I feel like I'm losing my identity again um, but I'm sure it will just evolve again I think any change in life can be difficult we also had loads of questions about how we plan and save for holidays and if we would ever consider going to South Africa someone also asked about Australia um, so for us holidays are a real priority I've mentioned it before but we should probably move or look at getting a bigger place for when the kids are older but for us we would always rather go on holidays we considered private school for Fraser um, and then we were like no our holidays are going to be affected um, so for us it's a real priority and we take a lot of time planning them um, and we would love to go to South Africa one day take the boys on safari um, but that is definitely far in the future when they are like a lot older same for Australia I'd love to show Fraser Fraser Island because that's what we named him after um but that is like when they're older as well so yeah i've got a bucket list i'd love to go to the south pacific this is going to sound really sad but ever since i watched moana i was like i need to go there and i've been to fiji but not with matt um, i went with friends and obviously the boys have never been that far i would love to go to hawaii there's so many places someone said what is your nationality so i am canadian i have a canadian passport that's where i was born and raised Till I was 14 but I've been in England for 22 years 20 yeah quite a long time um, and obviously I'm married to Matt and I actually have indefinite leave to remain in the UK because my family like generations before me were British as well so I'm not worried about getting kicked out <laughs> someone asked where do you get most of your outfits from so 
I am pretty much a high street girl. I love Zara. I love H&M. This year, particularly at H&M, I got about five beautiful summer dresses. Um, I love Primark, Next, and all the Next brands. I love that you can just get that on their website and it comes next day. It's like ideal. Um, ASOS, of course. Um, so yeah, those kind of top shop, that kind of place. Someone said, how much weight have you lost since you started running? And I get this question a lot. I have only lost about five pounds, but I think my body has like changed shape, maybe got a little bit tighter or something, because I feel like it looks different, but I haven't really lost that much weight. Someone asked, how do you manage to look so beautiful all of the time as a mum? So thank you so very much. But I will just say, I have a lot of help. This hair, it's not all mine. These lashes, they're not all mine. <laughs> These brows, they've been tattooed on. Um, what else? I had my teeth fixed. Um, that is pretty much it. I love a good skincare routine. I put makeup on every day just because it, it literally makes me feel so much better. Um, I get my nails done because I always have, because Matt's always had a beauty salon. So just every three weeks I've like booked in for nails and toes. Um, so in those kind of ways, I think I've been like quite maintained. Um, but yeah, I love having my microbladed brows and my lash extensions because I wake up in the morning and I'm like, halfway there um, but my own hair is is really very long it's just very thin so I have a few extensions put in as well but yes don't think that you know I look great all the time the next question is how do you handle negativity so I think I'm quite good at handling negativity um, in my early life I had loads of bad stuff happen like I don't go on about it but Someone saying something mean on the internet is, is not a big deal to me and I'm great at doing the out of sight, out of mind thing. If I don't look at it, I'm like, it doesn't exist. <laughs> um, so I'm good at that. And also if I have anyone who comments negatively or messages me and says something really mean, um, I like to just block those people and just help them not see my stuff. Um, I think it, it, there's a fine line because there is like creative criticism and sometimes I have people saying, you know what, Emily, I'm just not sure about this aspect of this video or this. And I totally take those kind of comments on board where they're actually just being constructive. It's the ones that are like, you're ugly, you're fat, you're blah. They're just literally trolls. Um, so yeah, I, but yeah, I don't think everyone is a troll. Definitely not. Like some people just want to say their opinion and that's fair. And obviously I've put my life out on the internet. So it's kind of free for people to say what they want. But I think I deal with it okay at the moment. <laughs> I haven't had loads of it, so thank God. Someone's asked, what was your education? So as a child, obviously I went to school in Canada. We moved around a lot. Probably every five years we would move house. Um, and then when I was 14, we moved to the UK and I did GCSEs and A-levels in the UK. And I did okay. My stepdad, I've mentioned it before on this channel, but he ended his own life when I was 17 in the middle of my A-levels. Uh, wasn't ideal timing but somehow I did get the grades that I needed to go to university and I'm so pleased that I did because I really didn't want to stay back a year um, with none of my friends. So I got enough to go to uni, I studied marketing uh, with human resources at uni, um, I did a half and half degree and then I really didn't enjoy the human resources side of it. Um, so then I just focused on marketing and PR and I've always loved that, always felt that I've been quite good at that and obviously it's helped me a lot with my YouTube career as well. I actually watched a speech by Steve Jobs the other day, he gave a lecture um, to Stanford University and he said in that, you can never connect the dots while you're going through life but when you look back you can like easily connect the dots and that just makes so much sense like it's weird how a lot of the things that I did leading up to this job um, I've just really helped and it's kind of all made sense um, so I'm massively digressing um, but yeah that is pretty much my degree and I got a 2-1 in marketing I got a first in my dissertation which I was really happy about Someone said, do you consider yourself Canadian or English? That's a really tricky question because if you asked me where home was, I would say England. But then if you asked me where I was from, I would probably say Canada. I say to people a lot, I'm originally from Canada. Um, 
So yes, I don't know. To be honest, I can't ever imagine leaving the UK. I love it so much. Someone said, do you have a favorite sun? <laughs> so of course I don't have a favorite sun, but depending on what time of the day it is, I might have a favorite sun. It's funny when you have your own kids and you're literally like, you see pieces of yourself in all of them. Like sometimes Caleb can be really tricky. Um, he's very strong-willed and little things like that about him. I remember as a child not eating, being really fussy, being you know strong-willed and stubborn and those kinds of things. So sometimes it's like you're looking at yourself and it's really hard to raise. So yeah, sorry mum for all the um, fussy eating because now karma has got me. Someone said, do you watch any TV and what are your favorite shows? So to be honest, I watch more YouTube and Netflix, but we did get obsessed with Love Island this year. We just started watching a few of the episodes and then we were hooked and we couldn't stop and it basically took over our lives. I've been loving keeping up with the Handmaid's Tale series. I recently watched Fleabag, Killing Eve, love that as well. Um, so yeah, we, we like a series like that. Someone also asked, how do you deal with temper tantrums? So I've actually made a video about how I deal with them. So I'll link that one down below. But the main thing I do is like remove them from a situation. If they're throwing a temper tantrum, like here Jackson has thrown a couple of whoppers in restaurants. So the first thing I do is just take them outside and try to calm them down or talk to them. I also have found that giving my children options has really helped with temper tantrums. If I say to the boys, you know, do you wanna wear this top? Or do you wanna wear this top? They feel that they have the control, but actually I'm happy for them to wear either top. So I am controlling it, but they feel like they're in control, so everyone's a winner. Someone's asked, how long does it take to edit a video? So this can vary so very much. Like this type of Q&A video will probably only take me an hour to edit and upload load whereas my hacks videos or my speed cleans they take so long because not only have I got to obviously film each different part of it I then have to edit it then I have to do a voiceover on it and that can be really time consuming so I think those types of videos probably take me like five hours <laughs> um, which is crazy when at the end of it you just get like a 10 minute video and I know some people think it's so very easy but you know, you have to think about the idea, then do the research, plan a loose kind of script or what you're gonna do, plan the filming, put on makeup, get childcare, clean your house, then start filming, then edit it, then voice over it, then upload it. Uploading it can even take so long because you have to think about your thumbnail, you have to think about your tags, you have to think about your description. There's so much like more to YouTube. Um, than even I knew, like when I started out, I remember thinking this would be a nice easy hobby. And then as soon as you get into it, you're like, oh my goodness, this is actually a lot of work, but I totally love it. And someone else has asked how um, I plan my, like how do I choose what I'm gonna film um, and stay motivated when you're growing. And when I started out, I think it took me six months to get to 100 subscribers. I did a 100 subscriber giveaway. I was so excited about it. Um, but I think just make content that you like to make that interests you and that you really enjoy because it is a lot of work. You have to have a passion for it. Like I love sharing tips and I love getting emails from people saying that was so helpful or I used that hack and it was really, really good. Um, so if you do videos that you like to watch, that you like to make, it will make a massive difference. And also if you run out of ideas, just ask your audience, they will tell you or look at your views. If I look at what you guys actually like to watch, my cleaning videos do so well for views. And every now and then I get uh, messages on them saying, you know, why do you keep making cleaning videos? And I'm like, well, look at the views. They're like 500,000 views versus you know, 50,000 views on a day in the life or something. So I kind of like to look at what you guys like to watch and where everyone's eyeballs are and then make more of that. Someone has also asked, how do you budget? Can you give me some tips as someone just starting out? Well, my biggest tip when it comes to budgeting is really boring, but it just really works for me. Whenever I'm trying to be careful with money or think about where I'm spending my money, I write every single outgoing down in my diary, in my planner, and then I just know. And there's something so much more, I don't know, if you buy a coffee and you have to write like three pounds 50, 
down in your planner it makes you take it in a bit more makes you see where you can cut back so that is like my number one super easy tip write everything down and you will literally be like oh my gosh i'm spending this much on that and i really don't need that subscription app or whatever it is um so that's a good way to get started and i think i'm gonna make this next one the last one because this is probably a really long video and he is gonna wake up any minute but the last one is do your boys fight and if so, how do you deal with their arguments? So they're just literally starting to really fight and like thump each other. So Caleb's nearly six, Fraser's nearly nine, and they do get on like, for the most part on this holiday, it's been really lovely. They've really bonded, played together so well in the pool. They've been playing ball or they love to play football together as well. Um, but every now and then that <laughs> there are a few little punch ups. And it's really difficult because I read this book, Raising Boys, that was like most of the time when your kids are wrestling, it is like a big cuddle on the ground and it's actually a way of them bonding. So I try not to get too super involved unless someone's actually getting hurt. Sometimes, it sounds really bad, but I'll almost be like there listening or watching but kind of turning a blind eye and it will just fizzle out on its own. Um, but obviously if someone's really getting hurt, I will intervene and then make them apologize to each other, kiss and make up kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so far, I think I'm at the beginning of it, so I'll let you know. <laughs> right, so that is it for this q and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, please put them in the comments down below and I will try my best to answer it. I love reading the comments that you guys leave me and replying to them. Someone asked me in the comments the other day if it was actually me replying. So I just wanted to say that it is me. It's something that I've always done since my channel started and I really, really enjoy it. So I try to be online an hour or two after a video has gone live so that I can answer you guys um, so it's best to be early um, but yes anyway we're having a lovely holiday I'm gonna go back to the pool right now and there will be some holiday vlogs coming up very soon and I'll see you soon bye guys